Hi folks, um, right, following on from my previous um, upload about my uh, my war game slash board game, um, this was what I showed you the other day, which was the an element base with a flag and what they call a top-down look at the figures. And now it's a bit, for me it was a bit clunky and I thought it's a bit, you know, there's 12 figures and it's a bit big, it's not really what I wanted, so I thought, right, Let's design something more like, let's say, 15 mil. Obviously, no need to do 25 mil. I do 25 mil with figures. Um, so what I did, I then designed, took some figures, changed them around, took them from the Napoleonic range. Um, I'll put some stills on uh, to show you what they look like and what I did to them. So that's. You can see that that's what you get it's your figures you've got the command group there yeah we've got the drum you can quite clearly see the drummer i hope you can stand the bear an officer with a sword on his shoulder but it's showing up isn't it and then you've got four fusiliers at the back this would be the base size i would use for 15 mil i think it's basically 30 mil by i can't remember now i'll just have to check on that Right, it's actually 40 mil by 25 mil deep. Um, and that represents eight figures, as you can clearly see, eight figures. That I say that was the original idea. So I've scrapped that idea now, even though I'd uh, completed quite a lot of units for Prussians and Austrians. But I'll take that away. Right, so I say what I've done is made it more, more like a 15 mil game. So for example, we've got uh, that's a command figure top-down command figure on a block so we say it's part board game probably more board game than war game but as I said before the trees and the buildings are over here are three-dimensional um, here we've got a battery this is a, a Prussian seven years war army um, so these what we here we've got six crew these denote heavy guns over here, just this side, whoops, I like to be apologise. A bit bright for crew, these would be medium guns. Or heavy and the others are extra heavy guns, but there we go. Um, the infantry battalion is displayed like this. So we will get, there we go. Uh, without having to paint them up, that's a 48 figure battalion. In a, in a battlefield column. Obviously a marching column would be like that. That would be a marching column. Uh, and that's a battlefield column. Lines obviously would be, that would be your lines. So that's how a line would look. Makes sense, two ranks. Um, I'll put them in a battlefield column for now. <clears throat> or a tactical column. Um, that's what I came up with. Um, basically 15mm figure size uh, printed and say fixed onto wooden blocks but it gives me an idea of what it would look like if I wanted to buy an army and build it up and uh, play a game but I was uh, I was very impressed with myself he says modestly with how these looked um, so I, uh, I designed and printed as I say I had to design them they weren't they weren't set this way but it wasn't that hard once you've done one you just copy and paste and change things around I mean here obviously these have got the uh, the bicorn on and I had to change these to the oops the mitre if you can see that it represents the mitre with the folded flap there um, over here we've got oh it's a bit too bright there over here we've got cuirassiers again these are Prussian cuirassiers they can just about make out their black breastplate that's the command group, and that's and so I made the because the four fitted on the base quite well. Same size as the infantry, as you can see there. It's the same frontage. I like games with um, element frontages being the same. Yeah, you know, artillery is uh, not quite, but uh, similar. Um, that represents a regiment of uh, four squadrons. There we also get things like what have we got here. These are hussars, which these are the blacks uh, hussars or death's head hussars, famous Prussian unit, I think, in Seven Years' War. Very black, so you don't see a lot, but you can I can see quite clearly the um, police hanging off. Um, 
just make out the sleeves and that hanging off to the side. Uh, again, that's it, put there. And Prussian Dragoons, um, represented with a light or a mid cornflower blue, I think they call it. As you can see, musician blowing into the ear of the officer, which seems to be normal. You, I couldn't get it to blow that way diagonally. It was either to the left or the right, so he's blowing into the officer's face. Uh, there we go, that's that. Uh, as I say, then over here we've got the Austrians, um, Austrian Hussars. I think they might show up better as Austrian. You can see the Austrian Hussars there, the shape of those. Uh, they do look like Austrians to me. Um, Austrian, what have we got? Austrian Karaziers there. Uh, and we've got some Austrian Grenadiers here with their, uh, their mitres or bearskins or whatever you call them. And this is a purple unit. I've got them stacked in a tactical, sorry, in a strategic columns at the moment. In just stacks, it seems more sensible. Uh, it's a light artillery piece there, which goes with each battalion. Uh, again, just two crew. Uh, Austrian infantry wearing uh, bicons. Three cornered bicons, is it? I think they're still called bicons, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, we've got a command figure there. Uh, that's a four crew battery, so that would probably be a heavy battery. Yep, and some more over here. Uh, there we've got some more Austrian Hussars. And in the mid blue, or deeper blue, uh, we've got some Austrian Dragoons. Again, just like the Karassiers, four elements making up with the command. There we go. So that's what I designed. Um, I say you can, for me I took it as using figures so there's there's no need to change the rules the rules are what they are um, it's a question of if you want to play seven years war rather than going into expense of buying all the figures painting all the figures up setting out the battlefield and then go oh I don't like this I say this took me probably about a month weekends sorting out designing the figures um, printing them off, cutting the blocks to size. Obviously, you need them on a wooden block. Right? Just make a better of a play, better playing piece. Um, yeah, and we've then got um, some Seven Years' War armies to have a go. See if you like it. Um, you can stay with these figures, or or you could change and and paint up some figures. Um, I'm quite happy with the top-down two-dimensional idea. Not for everyone. Some people like, you know, the more three-dimensional. So the figures jump up at them or stand up at them. But for me, it worked. Um, I was happy with how it um, it all turned out. Right. What I'll do is I'll put some um, stills on now, so you can see how these um, figures actually started out, and if I can find them, hopefully, um, what I did, how I printed them, um, and how we got to where we are now. So I'll just put those stills on. And hopefully from that you saw the sort of the process and how I got to uh, to where I got to. Um, I say uh, I designed those, designed them the size, put them onto uh, an A4 printing page, and just set the printer to print. Those were in the days when my printer worked. <laughs> I still got to buy a new printer for uh, for various things. Uh, sorry, I have my daughter to uh, print things for me, but it's it's not as easy as having your own to just print the odd flag or odd figure design when you need it um, but you can see from those um, how things worked out uh, not difficult and then say with my bandsaw just cut some wooden blocks to size right so I think what I'll do now uh, may do a little play test and uh, 
just to give you an idea how things work. Uh, they say those were my rules back in 1990. Um, for Franco-Prussian, Franco-Prussian, listen to me, for Seven Years' War, um, all I did was took the Napoleonic rules and did a little bit of adoption, just really um, allowing the Prussians to fire more. Um, they seem to have been very good on the old shooting, um, so they can fire while charging. Normally that's not possible, but apparently the Prussians were very good at this. So I set about and just had a had a basic game. So I'll, I think I'll do a, a little run through now. For uh, Napoleonic or um, Seven Years' War, I use um, a D10 for morale. So just a basic D10 dice and D6 for shooting and anything else needs to be done. So I'll now set up and deploy. Um, what we should we do? Let's dice. We'll see where the Austrians go first. Austrians on a 5 and Prussians on a 6. So the Prussians will set up and move first. I'll be back to you. Right, so what I've done, move the Prussians, so we've got everyone here, we've got the Prussian cavalry, one unit's deployed into a battlefield formation, these other units are still in grand tactical manoeuvring, the artillery battery has stayed there so it can fire, fusiliers, we're going to, yeah fusiliers aren't there, fusiliers have advanced and deployed, and we've got musketeer battalions there have deployed, slightly covering the guns, oh dear the battery. So uh, they won't all be firing. Um, and over on this flank, the Dragoons have advanced and the Hussars have advanced. So although they're over here, oops, pointing. Although they were further back over here, they move at a faster speed. So they moved up to half the move, which was, um, yeah, three sticks. And um, they've deployed into a battlefield. So I'm now going to do the Austrian move. Right, so that's both sides have moved. The Austrians have now deployed where they can. Oh, no, let me just tidy this lot up a bit. So we've got a Grenadier Battalion deployed there. The other Grenadier Battalion stayed in column. March, we've got the Fusiliers deploying. Uh, battery there. These are the battery guns which have moved. Um, they're facing the other way so they can't be deployed yet. Um, same over here. This battalion, regiment, has sorry, battalion has moved forward with its gun. This one's moved forward. These are these are deployed into uh, um, a three-wide column, and these guys. Let's just turn that figure round. And these are deployed into a three-deep column, just slightly different battlefield column. Dragoons deployed there, and over on this flank we've got the Hussars. Now they've stayed at the distance. Oops, yeah, just too close. Moving back a bit. That's it. There, they've sort of bumped. That's the measuring stick. I use the same measuring stick as I do for ancients. It works for me. Again, no need to change um, those sort of things that don't need changing. Right, okay, let's have a look. Right, that's the movement done. Uh, firing, there's a bit of firing from the artillery that um, could fire over here and a couple of guns here. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, three guns there. Nothing really happened. Uh, just pop, 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 as they say. Right, sort out the next move. Let's have a look at the Austrians. A three, Prussians, a five. So the Prussians move first. Right, I'll get that moving done. Right, that's the um, Prussians finished. Cavalry deployed over on the flank here. Our reserve unit coming up behind. Guns didn't move. Fusiliers deployed, and that one's echeloned out. These three musketeer units have advanced. Guns stayed there, and on this flank. The Hussars have gone round the wood and the Dragoons have lined up, um, oh, a bit of paper there, get rid of that, uh, lined up one behind the other in between the woods. Okay, I'll now do the Austrians. Right, uh, so we've got the Austrian Hussars on that flank have pulled forward to uh, take on the Prussian Hussars. Uh, the Austrian Dragoons have lined up there, battalion deployed behind them, um, it's deployed its um, Battalion artillery, that's now deployed. They stay where they are. The uh, heavy battery here, stay where they are. Um, those two musketeer battalions have stayed where they are. The guns have deployed, and the uh, grenadiers are slightly echelon forward. And those grenadiers have just formed into a battlefield column. Um, on the flank here, the Parassia units have um, lined up 
um, Hussars have stayed in column and march column so nothing really they can do okay that's where we are so uh, I'll sort out and see what's happening next right so what we've got we've got the cavalry there two units engaged in combat there um, over here was just the firing from the artillery and uh, we've got the dragoons in combat here and the hussars in combat on the flank so I'll just work that out Right, that was a bit topsy-turvy. So, over on this flank, the Austrians lost this to the Prussian Hussars, so that'll be a fallback. Um, the Prussian Hussars lost here, but they, uh, sorry, the Prussian Dragoons, but they will be able to fall back behind the other Dragoons, that's why they were moved up. And over here, nothing happened in the center. On this flank, we've got a Prussian loss to the Austrians, and an Austrian loss to the Prussians, so it's one each there. Um, so I'll sort that out and do the moving. Right, what happened here? The uh, Hussars ran away, but only two, and they only pursued one. So they should have kept in contact, but they didn't. Um, here, the Dragoons fell back behind the other Dragoons. They were order five, but these were order four, which brought them into contact with a unit in support. So that's a fresh unit against their pursuit. Um, over here, these are, uh, sorry, Karassis went back three, they went back two, so they failed to stay in contact. Here, they pursued for one, and they ran six, as you can see, a mega distance. So they were not happy in staying there. Right, that's the end of that bound. I'll uh, see who goes next. So we drive for the Prussians, a three, the Austrians, a five. So the Austrians move first. I'll get that sorted. Right, so what's happened here is the Austrian Hussars have formed up to uh, screen the Karassias. I mean, the Hussars had stand no chance against the Karassias, they'd run. Um, the uh, Grenadiers have formed a sort of echelon there um, to protect them. As far as I know, uh, seven years, well, they don't go into square, do they? I'm not too sure on that, but I've formed an echelon there. Um, nothing really much happened over here. This unit's lined up. And the Dragoons have come up behind their other Dragoons, again in case they're beaten and have to go back. Um, nothing happens over here. Right, I'll now move the Prussians. Right, that's the um, <clears throat> Prussian move finished. Nothing really happening over here. Fusiliers have advanced towards the Grenadiers. The other Fusilier unit has advanced here. Um, Musketeers advancing. These guys are going to get shot at badly, but there we go. That's and these are advanced here. Um, over here, these can turn around and rally because they fell back behind their support, un uh, support unit. Um, yeah, that's it. Right, I'll sort out shooting and uh, see what's going to happen. Right, and uh, that bound. The uh, Austrians decided not to rally the Hussars and they've gone roll to six. They've gone back a mega distance. In here it was a tied fight, uh, five to five, so that's a draw, so they'll carry on schwacking each other. Um, yeah, these guys are now rallied. Um, over here, Prussians charge into there, beat the Austrians, push them back, push them back there, and push them back there. So all three combats uh, were pushed back. Um, yeah, and the cavalry over here, the uh, Karasis decided not to rally and continued back. Um, they got another two, so these two are rallied at the end of the bounds. Um, they haven't rallied. Oh yes, they can be rallied. They didn't move back, so they could be possibly rallied at the end of the bound. I'll check that out. Right, uh, oh, I've got one to complete here. Just move this back, pushes those back. And we've got a bit of a follow-up here. Oh, there we go. There we go, there we go. So those Austrians are pulled push back and the Prussians push forward um, and the only sort of problem was over here um, these couldn't fully um, move back so that disordered them but also disordered the grenadiers they're trying to push back through so uh, it's gonna be a bit sticky for these guys right um, let's go through and see the next move Austrians are the three Prussians a one, so the Austrians to move first. Right, that's done now. What I've done is the cavalry there failed to rally. I tried to rally them, but they couldn't rally uh, from the combat. Um, 
these have stayed in position these have moved into a um, tactical column it's the only way to get out of the way um, they remain disordered so that's all they can do and these obviously remain disordered because of combat um, over here nothing's really happened the Austrians have stayed in line it is the Austrians way to be defensive um, seems to be right so I'll now move the Prussians Right, that's all the moving finished. Uh, we've got a fresh unit of Karasis come in here against the Austrian Karasis. Uh, these are now fully rallied. The Austrian Karasis are fully rallied. Um, as I say, they've found to rally. The Fusiliers have moved up um, to take on those. They're going to take some shots from the battalion gun, but it won't do a lot of damage. This will probably be the most damage. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, seems to be the Prussians like to do this sort of thing, but that's um, a heavy battery, so we'll see what happens. Um, if they can get in, they will win. Um, over here is push back. I say nothing happened here, nothing happened here. So, right, I'll sort out the moving and uh, come back to you. Right, uh, combats, right. Prussian dragoons lost, so they're going to go back, but again, we'll fall back behind. And the Austrian dragoons here are doing very well. Um, over here, um, this was a tie. In other words, yeah, even though they'd pushed them back previous, and uh, that's a, a draw there. But over here, well, the guns, uh, they got badly shot up, but enough they were able to go in and again be in Prussians, and they'd beaten the artillery. So the artillery will have to run. Um, these were pushed back again. Um, and they're now disordered and they were disordered so I'll test them they're probably going to be shaken um, and over here the uh, fusiliers Prussian fusiliers beat the gun that's gone the uh, that's the battalion artillery of this musketeer unit they also beat the grenadiers but again in the formation the grenadiers are in you can the Austrian grenadiers that is you can see why they were beaten so I'll sort those out out and over here the um, Prussian Karasiers beat the Austrian Karasiers, uh, pushed them back, and these declared a charge on the um, Austrian Hussars, and they've just run because Austrian Hussars, so they don't have to uh, stand. Um, so I'll do that, sort all the movement out, and come back to you. Right, that's sorted all the movement out. The uh, Austrian Karasiers have gone back. Prussian Karasiers pursued the Austrian Hussars over there. <coughs> Excuse me. The Grenadiers have gone back, they became shaken. The Austrian Grenadiers, the Fusiliers have pursued through, routed the gun. The Austrian Musketeers are shaken. Um, that disorder will disappear at the end of the move, yeah. Um, these are pushed back, they're now disordered. Um, they passed away the tests for the rout. I thought you might like this. I have a match. See, printed off some guns and some little crew running away. <laughs> Just a little thing you can do. I say it's all Photoshop, so just minus off the crew, added back the grass, and uh, we've got some un, uh, unmanned guns there. Um, these guys took away the test and failed, so they're shaken, and that's it really at the moment, is it? Nothing else is much going on. Right, um, let's see. Austria, let's see if the moves. So one for the Austrians, and six for the Prussians. The Prussians go first. Okay, not much movement for the Prussians this time. Just brought up the other Kuzar, uh, <laughs> or even uh, Karasia units came up alongside. They'll be able to uh, support this unit here. Um, these are all locked in combat. Uh, infantry are locked in combat. And the Prussian Hussars have come round the side. They should be able to take on the Austrian um, Musketeers. Right, we'll now sort out the Austrian move. Right, all the moving completed. I'll now sort out the shooting and the combats. Not going to be a lot of shooting, a bit of artillery firing, but uh, nothing much uh, from anybody because just about everybody's in combat. So I'll sort that and I'll come back to you. Right, here we are. Okay, over this flank, the dragoons. Austrian dragoons, one again, pushed back another unit. Not enough to destroy, um, but again, push them back so they'll fall back behind their friends. So I'll I'll just do that now. I've got to rally back behind them, and uh, because of the distance, the Austrians are obviously keeping contact. So we're nearly off the board now, folks. Okay. Um, 
Here the Hussars came up, it's a close range firefight and they became disordered. Um, okay, in the middle um, that became a rout, they're shaken, um, that unit was shaken um, and lost so I've got to go back, be a waiver test for those. Um, that was in route before and they have, those have stayed shaken but again pushed back further and obviously with the two units here that's totally destroyed that unit of Austrian Carassiers and this fresh charge here against these at the halt uh, disordered that was a rout right I'll sort this all out and get back to you right that sorts all the movings back and we've got the routes here they passed away with test but they're still shaken so they didn't recover from that the hussars became shaken we've got the route of the austrian to the uh, austrian karassi so the austrian cavalry wing has gone over here um so these were pushed back pushed back again these are shaken push back shaken that was the route that's a route um they became shaken testing because the parent body's gone um Oh, I've just got to check the other two units to see what happens to those and say that's a, a charge disorder. They'll they'll rally back, I think. Um, right, I'll see who moves next. Uh, four for the Austrians and two for the Prussians. Right, I'll, uh, I'll do the waiver test here and move the Austrians before the Prussians. Or move, sorry, move the Prussians before the... Right, surveying the battlefield. I think that's it. I've just saw that. I've actually done the Austrian move. Uh, the wave test here, the gun passed and didn't become shaken, but the uh, musketeers became shaken. Uh, so it looks like the hussars charged too soon. Um, those hussars have come back round here and rallied. Uh, but I think as the middle's gone, there's a, what have we got, a unit of grenadiers here that are sound. Uh, but they were testing for a route there. And if they route, they'll be testing. So it's, I think they may go into the village to... Uh, occupy that um, that would be the best place for them everyone else is either shaken or in rout um, and shaking units likely to get into rout um, and the cavalry here are okay on this flank so the Austrian cavalry have got the upper hand but they're virtually on their own um, obviously Prussian artillery is here ready to uh, fire where it's needed and say so this flank um, the Prussians have taken so I think the end of this little uh, little scenario, just a little run through of what I do um, with my blocks uh, representing sort of 15 mil scale, uh, top down by uh, what's that junior general, isn't it? Dot org, I think. I'll put some details on about them. Um, but yeah, great fun. Short, just a little run through um, of what's possible. You don't always need the figures. But again, now the option is, if you wanted to, you can go, right, I'm going to start painting up some figures. I like this style of play. Um, if you don't like this, this style of game, or you think, oh no, it's Seven Years' War, or Napoleonics, or AWI is not for me, then you haven't wasted a lot of money painting up figures, or buying lead and painting it up. Uh, money and time. So, Okay, there we go. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, bye for now.